All right, so far in our class series, we've covered the most unpopular classes that very few players want to play. But what about the rest of the classes? Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover the Druid, trending more on the less popular side of the spectrum. Players choose this class more often than Paladin, Priest, or Shaman. That makes this class the fourth least popular when it comes to hardcore, and is also the fourth most likely to reach level 60 without dying. So it's kind of middle of the road. But why the rise in popularity over other classes? Well, Druid has a lot of distinct advantages when it comes to leveling. High mobility and leveling speed make this class appealing for hardcore. The Druid endgame, not so much. Being forced to play Resto or the high effort, low reward Feral DPS leaves a lot of players deciding to choose a different class. But if you're up for a smooth leveling experience, then in this video, I'm gonna go through seven tips to help you on your journey through hardcore as a Druid. Now, why you should not play Druid in hardcore. So if you're going to play a Druid, you should know the downsides. And one of the big ones is that levels one through 10 10 is painfully slow and it's not that much fun. You really are just using wrath and moonfire and auto attacks. You don't really have a whole lot to speed up your damage. You run out of mana all the time and your melee attacks are super weak. It's generally very slow and difficult. So that's definitely a big downside one through 10. Once you reach around level 20 or so, you get cat form. Cat form doesn't really take off until you start getting some of the better cat form abilities. Like you don't have a good finishing move when you're in cat form until level 34, uh, something like that and uh, honestly it's just a little bit awkward uh, in different parts of the leveling journey whether it's around level 20 when you reach level 40 plus there's a bunch of parts where the druid leveling experience gets a little funky on top of that druids don't have any form of consistent resurrect this isn't actually going to be that big of a downside in hardcore because druids i mean no one's going to be able to get resurrected in hardcore so it doesn't really matter if they don't have a regular res just the battle res right so not too many downsides for playing a druid but a ton of upsides and this is why you should play a druid because of the following strengths well number one they level super fast they're considered pretty much the fastest leveling class in the game right next to hunter they have the highest movement speed in the game being able to get travel form at level 30 being able to um, shift into that instantly no other class can get instant 40 percent maybe aspect of the cheetah so aspect of the cheetah is a 30 percent movement speed buff for hunters which it's not as good as travel form because travel form uh, if you get hit while Traveled form, it's not like you get dazed. So you get this instant cast, 40% movement speed buff. It's amazing. Not only that, but you also get out of crowd control effects. So if you're a druid and you get entangled, frost nova, you know, whatever, you can get out of any snares or slows instantly upon changing forms and any form of polymorph effect. This makes them really good versus mages, by the way. On top of all that, you can stealth in cat form. You can you can really just um, shift out a form, heal yourself, go back into a form. If you aggro more than one mob, you can shift into a, a bear for additional uh, tankiness. So this makes them really good at completing quests just because they're so nimble. They can change their form uh, depending on the situation. They're kind of like chameleons. Now, one of the biggest advantages actually of druids is that they have low gear dependence. Now, this is especially good because you can only run a dungeon once a day in hardcore. So there's not going to be a lot of opportunities to get good gear from dungeons for a lot of players. And so gear is going to be scarce in hardcore and druids the reason they have low gear dependence is because it doesn't actually matter the damage on their weapon druids when they shapeshift do a baseline amount of damage they still get the stats from the weapon but they don't actually their their damage doesn't change and so they're very gear independent they don't really need gear and so this is really great for hardcore where you're only gonna be able to do one dungeon a day and you might not get the item you're looking for so i think this is an especially powerful strength of the druid making them honestly underrated with the current popularity you know i think I think they're going to be way more when the official hardcore servers launch because with the hardcore servers, we're going to encounter this one dungeon a day thing uh, for the first time. Not only that, but druids also have incredibly high sustain. Like I was saying, you can fight a monster, shift out of bear, bear form or cat form, heal yourself up, and then immediately go and fight the next monster. Really have no need to drink or eat. Zero downtime, essentially, with their very strong self-healing. They also have pretty dang good crowd control with entangling roots, roots, nature's grasp. They can get away from enemies if they need to pretty easily. They also have, you know, bash as a uh, as a bear. You can also pounce as a cat. So they have quite a few options for crowd controlling their enemies. And what's great is that they can basically tank DPS or heal. They have all three roles available to them. And uh, for that reason, it's, it's, it's always fun. You can switch it up. If you're tired of being a cat, you can go bear and do quite well as that. Um, you can also really avoid encounters that you don't want because of stealth. Rogues and druids are the only ones who can enjoy this amazing stealth on, on command ability. And so it's really great to just be able to, you know, if you see an encounter you want to avoid,
destroyed. You can just sh shift into cat and stealth. Of course, if you know they were PvP, open world PvP, that would make them really incredibly hard to gank, of course. But uh, there won't be that in hardcore servers. So a huge amount of strengths for the druid, really proving why they are one of the best classes for leveling, but not represented so much in their popularity uh, for a couple different reasons that we talked about. Now, when it comes to gear for druids, we don't have to disregard it entirely. There's definitely some good gear you can seek out. Even though they're gear independent, you should still try to pick up some good gear uh, that is pretty much guaranteed, aka from quests, right? So number one, I would recommend Tunic of Westfall. This is a quest dungeon reward from the Defias Brotherhood, level 14, uh, Deadmines quest, essentially. There's the, the Trip Runner Dungarees. <laughs> Am I pronouncing that right? Level 25 Dungeon Quest Reward, The Grand Betrayal, No Morgan, Loxy's Training Stick. I think this is a fantastic choice for a druid because of that plus 60 attack power on there really helping. That's like just perfect, perfect druid weapon. Unfortunately, only a 10% drop chance from Houndmaster Loxy in the Scarlet Monastery. Then the Iron Shod Bludgeon is good. 20% drop chance from Iron Aya in Oldaman. Mason's Fraternity Ring. This is from a quest, so highly recommend picking this one up. Great stats on there. Do the quest Divino Matic Rod and Zulfarak. Really great quest. Everyone's going to be doing this anyways. The Wolf's Head Helm was best in slot for so long. I think well into TBC. It didn't get replaced until Wrath, I believe. Level 40, crafted by leather workers. Great for power shifting. So basically you use your all your energy and then shift out and then shift back in to a cat form. And you're going to go back in with more energy than when you left. Because when you shift with Wolf, Wolf's Head Helm, it's going to give you energy back, which is awesome. Warden Staff is really strong, but very unlikely you're going to find find that 0.025% chance world drop. And then you can also go for the Devil Source set, which is a BOE, you purchase it if you wanted to, rare crafted by leather workers. Now, in some videos, I recommend certain add-ons. In this video, I am gonna recommend two add-ons that I would say you should definitely not play without. One of them is the Druid Mana Bar. In Vanilla WoW, there's no way for you to keep track of your mana while you are shape-shifted. Uh, and so the Druid Mana Bar will basically, straightforward, put a little mana bar under your rage or, or energy bar, showing you exactly how much mana you have when you're shifted into a bear or cat. And this is really useful so that you know when it's regenerating, when you're full mana. It's really important to keep an eye on that so that you don't like shift out of bear form and like, oh shoot, I thought I had mana. Now I can't even go back into bear form because I'm oom. So having that mana bar is incredibly important. And another really important one is Nug Energy Bar. I think this one's great. It shows you both your rage, but also it shows you when you're going to get ticks of energy as a cat. This is great so that you can time your opener. You know, you can attack right before you get a tick of energy. Nug Energy Bar is super, super helpful. So those two uh, add-ons I highly recommend if you're going to play a druid just you should really get those two highly recommend now when it comes to the best race for playing druid in classic wow there's only two races that can even be a druid in vanilla which is night elf and tauren so in some ways it's almost a faction comparison right horde or alliance uh, but focusing on the races tauren have war stomp which is useful as an aoe stun but you'll need to shift out of shape-shifted form in order to use it because uh, it's not instant and it's also not instant cast with high mobility and being able to gather herbs in shape-shifted form Druids are the natural choice for herbalism and Tauren get cultivation, granting bonus herbalism skill, which is a great synergy. Alchemy is super good and hardcore, so overall I think Tauren is a very strong choice. Night Elves get 1% dodge, which is a great passive, always having that. And then Shadow Meld actually grants passive increased difficulty to be detected while stealth. And the ability itself you can use if you want to stay uh, stealth as a humanoid. So I think that's a nice passive bonus if you're going to be in cat form a lot, which you will if you're trying to level fast. And then the Wisp move speed is moot since if you die you're done in hardcore so my pick's gonna be torn on this one it's not a major difference though so honestly i'd recommend for you to just pick whichever you prefer anyways guys i hope you like this video and thanks for watching all the way through don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and i'll see you next time take care